presence of the Lord and the presence of God's people. Good to have uh, our evangelist to Chicago back with us today. Amen, Brother Reed. Hallelujah. Amen. So uh, just lift your hand high. If you have a special need this morning, we're going to go before the Lord and believe him for it. This morning, if you're listening by internet, we sure are hoping that you do and glad if you are. And uh, we want to just believe with you this morning on behalf of whatever your need might be, whether it be healing or any need this morning. Cast your every care upon him, he said, because he cares for us, and it doesn't stop there. He's well able to do something about it. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus this morning. And Father, we're looking to you and the slain lamb, your son, and what he did at Calvary, Lord, 2,000 years ago, that we might have this liberating truth, we might be saved, and that we might be found, Lord, justified in your sight. And Father, we lift up the needs of the people tonight, Lord. You see the hands that was raised, raised here in this assembly. You saw the, the, the hearts, the minds, the hands of the people that were raised by internet we're asking this morning lord and believe in faith that you'd come to the side of that believer this morning lord and the unbeliever to change his mind this morning lord and hallelujah for today is the day of salvation and now is that appointed time to make things right with god and the only way we can make things right with god is to come to calvary's cross and repent of our sin and embrace what god has given us today Oh, hallelujah. We lift up that person that's sick in their body this morning. We're believing for healing, Lord, to heal mentally, physically, and mentally. Lord, to make every bit whole in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, touch that person, Lord, that's in the bed this morning, sick in their body. Lord, lay your hand upon them, Lord, spiritually speaking, and let they would rise up, that they would be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Reminded again this morning morning that there's nothing too great for our great God. There's nothing too great for our mighty God this morning who comes to us with compassion, who comes to us with mercy and grace and healing in his hand. Hallelujah. Lord God, that's the God that we cry out to today. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray for all the assemblies out there this morning that's preaching this glad story. And it is the message of the cross that makes us glad, that brings joy and peace today and stability, Lord God. And we lift them up today, Lord God, that you'd even bring us all, Lord, including ourselves, to a greater understanding, a greater anointing of the truth, Lord God. Let it be done. Lord, hallelujah. Bless these assemblies this morning. Draw people to that meeting place, Lord, this meeting and gathering around the cross today, Lord, and draw people to the live streaming today, whether it goes out by this sanctuary or another, let it go out far and wide and to many ears, Lord, and prosper the, uh, those streaming, the, the, those live streamings and the, uh, the, those that goes out. We pray, God, that you would prosper them, Lord, and, and add to that uh, that endeavor lord in this great commission lord in this um uh, this mandate to take the gospel to all the world lord we surely need your help here lord god that's for sure we learn we can't do anything you said it we had to learn it though lord we've learned that we can't do anything without you and i'm asking this one that you bless our singers Lord God, and the musicians as they bring us into the throne of praise, Lord. And as always, I surely need your help. I'm asking you to anoint my lips to speak every ear to hear. Help me, Lord. Lord, to speak with clarity, to speak with understanding, Lord, with revelation knowledge this morning. God, let it go forth. Let it be done without fear or favor toward men. Lord God, let the Holy Spirit, Lord, have your way in this house today. Draw people, Lord. Convict people, Lord. Strengthen and teach us this morning by your Spirit and by the Word of God this morning. Father, we love you. It's always a privilege to gather in your name, in your presence, and in the presence of God's people. So thankful for the assembly this morning. 
So thankful for a assembly here this morning in this place, God. We love you. We give you praise and glory. So thankful for this glorious gospel and all that you have done and all that we know that you are going to do. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just help us, Lord, to stay at the place where you are working, Lord, where you're moving. God, help us, oh, Lord God. Let us never get to the place we think we'll be on the need of your help, Lord. But God, move in a great and mighty way today. Let, let everything that's said, God, bring you glory and honor. We ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said amen and amen. Give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Let's worship our great God. Everybody's all right? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let's praise him this morning. Race 
in vain. Jesus, hold my hand while I run this race. Oh, Jesus, hold my hand while I run this race. Jesus, hold my hand. in vain oh, put your hand in his hand put your hand in his hand put your hand in his hand and don't let go I've got my hand in his hand and I'm feeling mighty fine and I'm holding to his hand and he's holding mine I'm holding holding mine. Yes, I'm holding to his hand. He's holding mine. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Holding to his hand. It can't get no better than that, can you? Praise the Lord. We owe him so much, and I say that a lot, but we owe him so much. It's just that peace knowing that he's there with us. He, live with, he lives within us. He's, his Holy Spirit lives within us and, and guides us and helps us all throughout the days that we live. Ain't that, ain't that great? Oh, I know it. sometimes it don't feel like it, but, Lord, we don't go by feelings. We, we go by faith. I was telling my daughter yesterday, I said, we don't, we don't go by the things that we see. We, we go by faith. And it, sometimes it ain't easy because the whole world's going by what they see. But it's by faith that only please God. God don't listen to nothing but pure faith. He's got to hear. He's got to. He he's got to have pure faith before he can even move upon our hearts through his son. You got to be. Through, you got to go through his son to get to the Father, and uh, that's what most people don't understand. They say, "Well, I pray all the time, but do you pray? Uh, uh, do you have an earnestly desire to praise your Father? To have you repented of your sins? Have you gave your heart to Him? And do you look to Jesus Christ, the Author and Finisher of your faith?" Then Jesus, I mean, then God the Father will hear you. See, a lot of people think that, well, they can go right, to the, right through Jesus Christ and get to the Father, but you can't do that. You have to go through the Son. Ain't that great? Oh, we, got a, we have a great priest, high priest, don't we? Praise the Lord. We don't have to bring any sheep, goats, or anything like that in and offer, offer up on the altar anymore, do we? Praise the Lord, because I don't think I could handle it. <laughs> I don't think I could do that. I, I know I would, but... You know, thank God Jesus made it so easy for us. All we have to do is trust and believe. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to thank him for it, ain't we? <laughs> I'm going to keep thanking you. I'm going to keep thanking you for all that you've done and you're going to do. I'm just going to thank you. I love 
love the sound of your name. It fills me with peace, washes over me like a sweet gentle rain. I love to sing your praise, Lord. It brings the victory. No matter what I face, through all of my days, I love to sing your praise. The sound of your name It fills me with peace Washes over me Like a sweet gentle rain I love to sing your praise, Lord It brings the victory No matter what I face Through all of my days I love to sing your praise Well, I woke up this morning With my mind up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus hallelujah 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 well I'm singing and praying with my mind stayed on Jesus yes I'm singing and praying with my mind stayed on Jesus I'm singing and praying with my mind. Stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Where there ain't no harm to keep your mind. Stayed on Jesus. Yes, there ain't no harm to keep your mind. Stayed on Jesus. There ain't no harm to keep your mind Stayed on Jesus Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah Well, I woke up this morning with my mind Stayed on Jesus Well, I woke up this morning with my mind Stayed on Jesus I woke up this morning with my mind Stayed on Jesus Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah I love to sing your praise, Lord I love the sound of your name It fills me with peace, washes over me Like a sweet gentle rain of your name it fills me with peace washes over me like a sweet gentle rain i love to sing your praise lord it brings the victory no matter what i face through all of my days i love to sing your praise i love to sing your praise lord I love the sound of your name It fills me with peace Washes over me Like a sweet gentle rain I love to sing your praise, Lord It brings victory No matter what I face Through all of my days I love to sing your praise No matter what I face through all of my days, I love to sing your praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Say, man, I love to sing your praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Isn't God good this morning? 
Amen. I'm going to give you an opportunity to just lift your hands one more time and praise our great God in this meeting here this morning. Amen. You can rejoice with us there by internet. Let's just praise him and exalt him and magnify him. Amen. I can I can, I can, can think of a many, many, a lot of things this morning that I can just be so thankful and so worshiping him and praising him over. Hallelujah. He's brought us a mighty law away. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this great gospel that we have been given. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to worship him with our giving this morning. I want to challenge those that are listening by internet today. And even at a later time, amen, we're going to pass the, pl the offering plate in your living room where you are. All you got to do is just go over to our church website, Crossway Ministries, and as soon as it opens up, you'll see a donation tab. You can, you can click on that, and it will open up, and it will show you how to uh, give by PayPal. If you're not able to do that, feel free to mail your giving, your offering to us. Just mail it to Crossway Ministries, P.O. Box 9097 Green. Wood, Mississippi, 38930. The rest of us here, we're going to fellowship just for a moment. We're going to march down and give in the offering plate here on the platform. Let's embrace one another, brothers and sisters in Christ. Remind each other this morning how good, how great it is, amen, to be marching in this glorious gospel, amen. Father, once again, we come to you this morning. Lord, we ask that you multiply this offering many times over to meet the need. We ask that you bless the giver this morning and bless them abundantly. And I ask it without hesitation in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said amen and amen. Let's fellowship and let's give this morning. forward to that Bible says I has not seen nor ear heard neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him for they have been revealed to us by his spirit that means now we see Jesus and we see all his blessings but this song is about heaven and the most important thing that we're going to see is Jesus sounds If you decide to look me up don't waste your time looking around I won't be at my mansion You won't find 
find me by the sea just find Jesus and there I'll be I want to see the unseen on help me through the storms I want to touch those hands that touched and completely changed my heart I want to hear speak the words that brought such peace to me so just find Jesus and there I'll be when I step through those pearly gates there'll be so much for me to see I'll behold mansions tall and stroll down golden streets. Though the splendor would be amazing, there's only one attraction for me. Just find Jesus, and there I'll be. I want to see the unseen arms that held me through my storms. I want to touch those hands that touched and completely changed my heart. I want to hear him speak the words that brought such peace to me. Just find Jesus and there I'll be. I want to see touch the hands that touched and completely changed my heart I want to hear him speak the words that brought such peace to me so just find Jesus and there I'll be so just find Jesus there I'll be. Hallelujah. If you don't mind, I'm going to do one more verse real quick. Hallelujah. When you get to heaven after the trumpet sounds, if you decide to look me up, don't waste your time looking around. I won't be at my mansion, you won't find me by the sea, just find Jesus, and there I'll be. I want to see the unseen arm that held me through my storm. I want to touch those hands that touch and completely change my heart. I want to hear him speak those words that brought such peace to me. So just find Jesus, and there I'll be. So just find Jesus. There I'll be. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It won't be about everything. It's on our mind today. It won't be about where we're living at. It won't be what we're driving. It won't be all the things that clog our mind out day by day. But when we get to heaven, it'll be all about Jesus. We're going to be, everybody's going to be around Jesus because they know they wouldn't be there had not been for him. 
People can mock him. They can do anything they want to do here. But the time will come where they will have to stand before him. And he will show them who's boss, who's king, and who's mighty. He, I'm, I'm here today because of Jesus Christ. Nothing on my own merit, nothing that I can do, say, or hear, or whatever it might be. But it's been because of Jesus. Oh, I can look back and I can remember the things I used to do. And I can look back and I, I can also see where God directed my path. I didn't understand it then. And I'm, at times I still don't understand how he ever did what he did. But he did it. And he's did it in y'all's life too as well. Anybody's, anybody that is saved today, they can look back on their life and they say, I don't know how it happened, but Jesus did it all. He did it all. That's the reason why we will throw everything down at his feet. We will throw everything down at his feet. And we will proclaim him Lord of Lords, King of Kings. Oh, how glorious that day will be. And we all should long for it. We should all long for it. But we can have happiness today through Christ Jesus if we we'll just believe. Thank you, Jesus. He's awesome, ain't he, people? He's awesome. Where will we be without him? You call the sun to rise And you lay it down to rest You hold this heart of mine You hold my every breath Such an
hands close to the Lord Almighty Oh, nothing as sweet as His love and mercy Oh, nothing comes close to the Lord Almighty Nothing as sweet as His love Such an awesome God, so mighty, so holy, so wonderful. Such an awesome God, so selfless, so generous, so faithful you are. Such an awesome an awesome God, so mighty, so holy, so wonderful, such an awesome God, so selfless, so generous, so faithful you are. close to the Lord Almighty Oh, nothing as sweet as His love and mercy Oh, nothing comes close to the Lord Almighty Nothing as sweet as His love and mercy Such an so unworthy of his blood 
Hallelujah. Remind him where the poor man cried. And the Lord saved him. Hallelujah. So unworthy. So unworthy. But he saved us anyhow. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And I tell you, that's been some beautiful love. Beautiful worship. Beautiful presence this morning. I really love that song, Brother Joshua. That was beautiful. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, thank you, singers and musicians. Thank you so very much this morning. Hallelujah. I feel better already. Praise God. Amen. I'm glad I came to church today. Praise God. People just don't know what they're missing out on, do they? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. That's the only one drawback from uh, the media ministry as it does. If you're not very careful, it'll make you a lazy Christian. Amen. Praise God. Nothing like coming together and fellowshipping with God's people. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's uh, let's go to First Timothy this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Going to minister to you in the Word of God. First Timothy. Amen. And I'm going to just go ahead and give away the title. It's already been given on the internet. Amen. The glorious gospel. The glorious gospel, the glorious gospel of God. Hallelujah. Amen. First Timothy. Praise God. First Timothy chapter 1. And uh, I'm going to just begin reading in verse 1. I'm going to read 17 verses. Won't deal with all of it, but I feel like the reading is needful this morning. But I've, there's particular things, particular scriptures and subjects that in this reading that the Lord has showed me to you, focus upon. Amen. We're going to teach a little bit. We're going to preach a little bit this morning. Amen. I hope you have your spiritual antennas on this morning, encouraging everybody, whether they're in this room or whether they're listening by Internet, to get you a good word-for-word -word translation, a uh, good King James Bible. I know people are talking about a, a new King James Bible. I know nothing about it. So I can't recommend it, amen, but I know nothing about it. I do know that the good King James is, is a good, uh, thorough, word-for-word -word translation, amen. So do that, take notes, follow along, judge everything I preach and teach based upon the Word of God, not what someone is saying, amen, down the road, amen. Everybody got it? Say, I got it. Amen. amen. This glorious gospel that we have. Paul, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. And we're reminded uh, Sunday morning, Wednesday night, and every time we come together, especially as we've been teaching out of the, uh, the, the letters of 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, amen, we see where there were many that posed themselves to be apostles, but they were false apostles. Paul recognized them to be such so that the people uh, could recognize them to be such. But Paul declared him, himself, amen, to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. But you have to understand, this is more than just the declaration of the apostle Paul pertaining to himself. But these words are spoken and written under the inspiration of God, the Holy Spirit. So in actuality, this is what God is saying about the great apostle Paul. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, amen. By the commandment of God, our Savior, and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Unto Timothy I write, my own son in the faith. He said, grace, mercy, peace, and peace from God our Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord. You won't receive any of the fruit or the benefits that God has to offer apart from faith in the person Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary. That's where that river is flowing this morning from Calvary, amen. That's where the well 
of salvation and the well that's springing up in abundance. That's where it flows from this morning. It flows from Calvary, and it comes to that person who has their faith that God had given them in the object that God has given us, which is the cross. Quite simple this morning, but the church... They stumble over that. They stumble over the cross because they're determined to take up other things. But the gospel of Christ is simple. Amen. If we just get a hold of what God has given us, which is the death of his son on Calvary's cross, and understand and recognize and embrace by faith that in that, amen, that gospel is that we have also been crucified with him. But that crucified, that, that crucifixion of us, amen, has only been able to take place because of his crucifixion. He was crucified so that I could be crucified with him. That is the great power and the wisdom of God. Amen. Praise God. Once upon a time, times past, it was concealed. Amen. It was that mystery, but this mystery has been revealed to us by the teachings of the Apostle Paul. So now it's no longer a mystery, but it has become our message, just as it had with the Apostle Paul. And he said in verse 3, he says, I, As I besought you to abide still at Ephesus, when I went to Macedonia, that you might charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Speaking of the doctrine of Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. Paul entrusted Timothy to stay there and to teach those, amen, that to teach and to embrace no other doctrine other than the ways of the apostle Paul, which is Christ and him crucified for all things that pertains to life and godliness. If you're bound by something, if you're struggling with sin, the answer is the cross, amen. If you're wrapped up in the ways of this world, amen, the answer to that dilemma, amen, is the cross, amen. Paul said, amen, that I am crucified, God forbid, that I should glory, saving the cross of my Lord and my Savior, amen, whereby this world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. At Calvary, we can have victory over sin, victory over death, victory over hell, over the powers of darkness, victory even over the law in our own selves. Amen. We can have victory over it all, anything and everything that the enemy would use to try to destroy us. We have been given victory over it at Calvary. If we would just learn that and embrace it and walk in it and not be, not be moved by what we see, not be moved by how we feel, amen, we allow our feelings, amen, to move us away from that place of victory at times. Amen. We have to learn that we're not moving in this great gospel. Amen. That we're not marching forward in this gospel based upon sight and feelings, but we move and we stand and we operate and we live by faith alone in what Jesus did at Calvary. There we can experience the wonder working of God's mighty power. Amen. Also identified as grace. God, the grace of God. God is God at work, and he only works when he finds faith registered in what he gave us through the death of his son. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, amen. Fables are the words of men. It's the so-called wisdom of men, amen. Fables are the, are the, the, the thoughts and the, and the ways of mere mortal men. Amen, that sidetracks the wisdom of God, which is always Calvary, amen. Don't give heed to these fables, these endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, amen, which is in faith, amen. Amen, these things just minister questions, 
rather than godly edifying. The godly edifying and the building up of any person or believer is only going to come by us operating and living in the faith, the faith that God gave us. Amen. Anything else is just going to be a life of questioning this, that, and uh, the other. Amen. We'll be comparing the things of the world. Amen. And, and religion. We'll be comparing all of that to the truth that God works in. There should be no comparison. There should be no questioning. There should be no, well, I'm going to look at what the what the minister says about the cross, and then I'm going to study on what the world has to offer. None of that should be in our language and in our mind. All of that should have been crucified at Calvary's cross where we're determined now to know nothing save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. God forbid that I should glory in anything else. God forbid that I should look in any other direction other than what God has given. Amen. Praise God. And he said in verse 5, said, Now the end of the commandment is charity, which speaks of love. Out of a pure heart. Amen. Notice it says a pure heart. Amen. That pure heart is that heart that has been changed. Amen. Now you can... You can operate and walk in the love of God. Amen. That same love that loved us. Amen. While we were yet sinners and gave Jesus Christ on the cross that we might be brought into the household of God. And there this love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Now we can experience the true love of God, not something that we had manufactured in our minds, not something that we're pretending. Amen. But to from a pure heart we can experience the true love of God, amen, and then not only experience his love, but now we are positioned where we can walk and show and reveal and live out this love in our life toward others as well, amen, praise God. He said, out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of, and of faith unfeigned, amen, that in Acts, I, I like what the note says, amen, because that faith unfeigned, Find faith is a pretending faith. You know, we say that all the time. Amen. Let's don't be among those that are pretending. Amen. Let's be of those that are earnestly contending for the faith. Amen. And that, that pretending faith means that it really doesn't have the cross as its object. If it did, that you wouldn't be a pretender. Amen. You would be earnestly contending for the truth, and you'd be walking in that liberating truth. You'd be experiencing the victory that was purchased for you on the cross of Calvary, verse 6, from which some and today, amen, I know Paul looked around and there was, he used the word some, amen, today is far more than just some, it's a, it's a, it's a heap, it's a, it's a lot, and the Bible bears witness to that, and it's speaking prophetically that the, the, the hearts of men, speaking of the church, would wax worse and worse, they would go about being deceived and deceiving others, but in that day, Paul said, which some? Um, having swerved, have turned aside. That means they're missing that mark, amen. In other words, they've left the cross, amen. They're riding a ship out there on waves being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Doctrine. They pulled up anchor from faith in the cross and now they're just drifting in the seas of this world and of re religion. But he said in verse 7, say, that he said they're desiring to be teachers of the law. And I'll come back to that in just a moment if you'll just allow me to, to just read. And he said desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding. He said, but they, didn't, they don't understand. Understanding not, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. Amen. They desire to be teachers of the law, but they really don't understand 
what they're teaching. When you sidestep and you swerve and, and you leave the anchor at, the cro at Calvary's cross, you cannot understand what you are teaching and preaching as it pertains not only to the law but to grace or anything that has anything to do with the word of God and this great glorious gospel. Desiring to be teachers of the law. Amen. Understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. Verse 8. But we know that the law is good. And I'm going to drive that home in just a moment. I'll come back to that. Amen. If a man use it lawfully, there's a right and a wrong way to approach using the law. And I'm going to bear witness to the right way here shortly. Amen. But we know that the law is good. Amen. If a man use it lawfully. We're dealing with believers here now. Don't forget about that. Amen. But for the lawless and disobedient, the, this is what the law, verse 9, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. That righteous man is that man that's in walking in right standing with God. That's, the, that's what righteousness means. I'm in right standing with God by virtue of my faith and what he gave me, amen, and what he did for us so that we could obtain and walk in this righteousness which is faith in his son. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 21 makes it just as clear as the nose on my face this morning. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man but for the lawless and disobedient and the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them who defile themselves with mankind. For man-stealers, that speaks of slave traders, amen, which was a big thing in that day and time, not so much today, but it does go on in the world, amen. And so he said for man-stealers, for liars, for, for, for purge, it says for Excuse me, I get my bearing it just for man stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, those who swear falsely. And if they be any other thing that is not, look what it says, any other thing. Any other thing, amen. Paul's saying that the, the list is a little bit longer, amen. But now, once again, we're talking about the world, what the world does, that unredeemed, amen, sinful nature, amen. Praise God, amen. If, if you leave that faith, that is what you draw back to, amen. That where you're going back to, if you leave the faith, is where you came from in the beginning. You were just as much wrapped up in all of this then, amen, as you're going to be if you don't continue to fight the good fight of faith and go on in this glorious gospel, amen. And, and, and so when I, when I say that, and I say that a lot, the world does what the, the world will do what the world does. Now when I say that, I'm identifying with their sinful nature. Amen, which should not which should not be of us. Amen. When I say that, I'm not eliminating them and casting them off to some place that we just disregard and ignore the need. No, we take the gospel to these very ones because that is their own only hope. I'm not disregarding, amen, their need. I'm simply stating we should not be of that nature that we re that the church should not be of that same nature that we recognize is going on in the world. Do you understand that? Amen. Praise God. When he says in verse 11, amen, let's see. Verse 11, according, there's the title, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God. Amen, which was committed to my trust. Paul said this glorious gospel was committed to his, tr to his trust. 
Amen. God, give us people in this final hour, amen, that this same gospel can be committed to their trust. Amen. Let me read it again. According to the glorious gospel of which the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, God has committed this gospel to men and women, amen, to to. to to keep it pure and keep it powerful. Paul said in Philippians chapter 1 in verse 17, he said, I have been set forth for the defense of the gospel. Amen. He is our example. Amen. We'll look at that in a beautiful statement here in just a moment. Amen. So he, he, he is the example. Amen. We should be constantly in the defense of the gospel. He called names at times of those that were hindering the people from embracing the truth that sets free. Amen. However, we must do the same thing at times. There are times when we uh, call names of those that are openly hindering, amen, the, the gospel and for the people to embrace the truth, it sets free. We don't necessarily enjoy that, but God forbid, amen, I'd rather do that than to stand before the Lord, amen, and him not be pleased, amen, with these things. Paul said in Acts chapter 20, amen, said, I'm free from the blood of all men. I didn't hold any anything back that God had laid upon my heart, amen, to preach and teach and share, amen, said we preach, we teach, and we warn, amen, the, the warning goes right along with it, or you're not carrying out the mandate that God has upon you as a gospel minister, amen, a lot of people in the church don't like that, well, you can just go on with you don't like if that's what you, you got to do to go on, amen, but we're going to do what God has told us to do, amen, and not stand, not be ashamed of it, amen, not have a fear of men, amen, or ministries or the, the popular people or any of that type of thing, amen. Let us be pleasers of, of what God has said for us to do, not pleasers of men. Amen. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God which was committed to my trust. Amen. Paul, once again, he said, I'm set for the defense of the gospel. Galatians chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. Amen. He said, that by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Have I been given this gospel? I didn't get it from Simon Peter. I didn't get it from John or James. I didn't get it from men. Amen. I got it straight from Jesus Christ. Amen. And that, you know, that alone identifies with the great fervency and zeal that this man had to be true to the gospel. We need to see Christ. Amen. Standing before us with those nail pierced hands that was mentioned this morning and realize that he, amen, has entrusted us with the mandate to take forth, amen, the pure gospel, amen, and to defend this gospel, amen, and keep it powerful, amen, not only for our own selves and our own family, amen, but for the generation that's alive on this earth today and the generation that may come in behind us. If the Lord should tarry, amen, There's a there, the gospel is at stake. The blood of Jesus is at stake today, and he has entrusted us to keep it pure, to not twist, to not distort, to not pervert the word of God, and to present it as it is written, glory to God. Amen. He said there, flipping a the page now, going over to verse 12. He said, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me. Notice who the enabler is, amen. Christ has enabled me. Christ has enabled me, amen. I'm not enabled today because I got a diploma hanging on my wall. I'm not enabled to go forth with this gospel today because I've got, I've, I belong to some type of an organization. I'm not enabled this morning because 
because I've got a religious supervisor over me. I'm not enabled this morning because of anything that man or religion or the church has said, but I've been enabled this morning because Christ Jesus our Lord has enabled me just like he had the Apostle Paul and that enabling took place at the death of Paul at Calvary's cross. Hallelujah. He said it in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 in verse 12. He said death works in me so that I can bring life to you. That's where we are enabled when we identify with the death of Jesus Christ on the cross and we're crucified to the old man, to the old ways, to the world, to flesh and the law. There and there alone at that place of death are we enabled to go forth with this gospel. Anything else, amen, is nothing more than just a professional pretender in operation. Is anybody alive this morning? Let me read it again. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me for that he, amen, counted me faithful, hallelujah, putting me into the ministry. Amen. Praise God. He, he didn't learn how to be a minister. God made him a minister. Praise God. Amen. Now once we are made a minister, amen, we are on the path of learning. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God, amen, found me faithful. God knew that this man, he, God saw the zeal that he had as it pertains to the law. God saw the zeal that this man, as it, as it pertains to the Jewish religion, God saw that zeal, amen, for everything that was wrong, how he persecuted the church. And God, amen, chooses the least likely to do great things in his kingdom. Paul was the least likely of any man alive at that day and time to be handed the gospel and for him to be entrusted with it and to take it throughout the whole world. The man most least likely God chose to confound the wise of that day and even today. He chose the one that was least likely and entrusted him to keep the gospel pure. Amen. And to keep it apart from the false apostles amen and be willing to tell the people that they're on the wrong path hallelujah isn't that beautiful praise God put him, he put me in the ministry glory to God save me from that Jews religion amen he never looked back he never turned back, amen. He never went back, amen. And then from that time, he said, I, that, that Jew's religion is a thing of my past, amen. And he, then he renounced it with every ounce of energy that was within him. And he said, verse 13, and he's speaking of himself. Here, here's his witness, amen. He said, who was speaking of me before God got a hold of me and made me a minister, changed my life, amen, no longer. Saul of Tarsus, but Paul the apostle of Jesus Christ, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, amen, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief, amen, hallelujah, rest of, he, see, he was on, he was up on Fool's Mountain, amen, but he came down, there's a lot of people still camping out, amen, on Fool's Mountain and refusing to come down. He came down. Praise God. Amen. And he said, who was before a blasphemer, a persecutor, one that injured, that was injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And he said in verse 14, and the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant. And hallelujah. Amen. We, we can have that same grace today that God gave the Apostle Paul predicated upon this one thing if we have the same faith that the Apostle Paul had and we know what it is I'm determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified no question what he had his faith in and then if you've got your faith in the right place there's no question about God supplying this same abundant grace that God did with the Apostle Paul. Amen. 
Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying. This is a faithful saying. Amen. And worthy of all acceptation. Amen. Going back to verse 4. 14 again. Amen. Speaking of that grace, I looked over to John chapter 1, verse 14, and it says that Jesus, amen, there, John chapter 1, verse, is, was full of grace and full of truth. When you receive the grace of God, it's going to come holding hands with truth. Amen. I said it's going to come holding hands with truth. That truth is Christ and Him crucified. Amen. He came full of grace grace and truth and for us to enter into the grace that's in Christ he's full of grace full of truth amen a never ending supply the source is Calvary amen Christ the source is Christ but the, the means is him crucified in our faith in the cross amen that's how we enter into all that God is supplying us today or desires to supply us is when we're baptized into the one that is full of grace and truth R Romans 6 and 3 don't you know that so many of us were baptized into this man, Jesus Christ, who's full of grace and truth? There's the wisdom of God once again, the great wisdom of God that he would place us within his son. Amen. This full of grace and truth. We would be crucified with him so that we could identify with him. G baptized into his death. Baptized into his crucifixion, baptized into his death, and then raised up a newness, a new creation in Christ Jesus. Behold, all things have passed away, and everything about you, sir, and ma'am, has become brand new in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let go of the old and embrace the new. Put off the old and put on the new. Let the old go and embrace the new today. And and walk in the new, walk in the new covenant, walk in this great blessing, walk in Christ, walk in the spirit, which is faith in what Jesus did at Calvary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. That ought to make a mummy shout this morning. Amen. He said once again, verse 15, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. Amen. Praise God. That, that means that this, this gospel, these things that I'm saying is worthy to be accepted by the whole world, amen? And that is God's desire. We know that it's not going to work out that way, amen? But it's God's desire that none should perish. It's God's desire. I know everybody's seen it, the picture of the drag queens uh, mocking God, and God says, I won't be mocked. I know everybody's seen that, amen? Now, I know God does despises that. I know everybody's seen it. It's been all over Facebook. It's been all over social media. Amen. Where the drag queens, amen, did that portrayal of the last supper of Jesus Christ. Oh, how wicked, amen, that he is. It does something to you on the inside when you see that. It's that, uh, it's that righteous anger that rises up. Amen. Praise God. But the thing of it is, amen, God desires that every one of those would be saved, that their lives would be changed, that they would have an encounter, that these drag queens would have an encounter with the King of Kings. Glory to God. Amen. God desires that they would be saved. It's not God's will that the vilest sinner could, would perish. Amen. And the only hope for that is not a change of the laws in a nation. Amen. The only hope for that. Amen. And is that somebody, amen, unfearful of the ways of the world will go out into the world and preach the life changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Their only hope is the cross of Calvary. A law is not going to change it but nothing has the power to change that wicked heart apart from the cross of Calvary. That's mankind's only hope today. It's not in, it's not in the political realm. Amen. It's not in any of that. I said it's not in 
in any of that. The hope for mankind is found at Calvary's cross, but they won't know it. They can't hear it if, if there's not a preacher, amen, that's willing to go forth and preach this great and glorious gospel. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. And he said there, Praise God. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. He came into the world to save sinners. Amen. John chapter uh John chapter 3, 17, 18, there about the, the Lord says, I, I didn't come to condemn the world. I come to save the world because the world is already condemned. You see, uh, they would bark and say, well, you're condemning us. No. Oh, no. The Bible says you're already condemned. You're already on the road to hell. Amen. You already are condemned. Jesus, amen, has presented himself to you today so that you can be saved. You no longer have to be condemned. You no longer have to be brought under the curse of a broken law. You no longer can will have to find yourself crying out in the devil's hell throughout eternity, but you can be redeemed, and if you are redeemed, amen, by the power of God and the grace of God, the grace of God is not going to leave you where you are. Amen. You will throw down that, that, that you will throw down that drag queen garb. You will be delivered from it and you will renounce it and you will begin to walk in righteousness and godliness. Amen. Your life is going to desire to please God and no longer your own self. Oh boy. Amen. He said, of whom I am chief. Paul said that when he was a sinner, said I was the top of the list. Amen. He said, of whom I am chief. How be it for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first. Listen to this verse 16 closely. How be it for this cause, the worst sinner he thought he was on the planet. Amen. He said, how be it for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first, uh, do y'all see it like I see it, that in me first, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. Notice it says for a pattern. Amen. My life is set, how many times have we said, let's observe closely the words of the apostle Paul, but let's observe closely his life. Amen, because the preacher of the cross is not only going to preach it, but his life is going to be changed and he's going to live it. Amen. I said his life is going to be changed and he's going to live it. So Paul said, my life has been set before you, amen, by the mercy and the grace of God for a pattern. Amen. Sister Deb does so and makes a lot of beautiful things. Amen. But she has to have a pattern to go by. Amen. So he says, my life, my ministry is set before you as a pattern. And he said that it was in me first. In me first that Jesus might show forth all long suffering. Amen. Praise God. This, this great gospel was revealed to him First, the meaning of the new covenant, the understanding of the message of the cross. We see that in Galatians chapter 1. He said, I didn't receive it from men. I didn't go up to Jerusalem to get it. Amen. Christ Jesus revealed it to me. It's by revelation of Jesus Christ. And I have become your pattern. He said, follow me. Amen. Follow me as I follow Jesus Christ. He said, look what he said, I am your pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him. Amen. Those that believe on him, Christ and him crucified, should look to the life and the teachings, amen, and the teachings of the apostle Paul in his epistles, amen. If you want to know how the church should look, how the church should operate, how the church should function, amen, you will find it in the apostle Paul's epistles, amen. That is our guide for how the church should look and operate. The modern day man wants the church to look like the world so that people won't be offended. 
Amen. It's, that's called seeker sensitive. Amen. Well, let's pattern our let's pattern our, our our church after the ways of the world. Turn the lights down low. We'll have strobe lights, fog machines. We'll we'll hire dancers and put them on the platform. I'm not exaggerating. That type of thing goes on today in the modern day church. Amen. It's just pattern after the world. Amen. But God, Paul says, no, you pattern it all after me, who I am, what I've said to you. Amen. In my life, in my ministry. <coughs> if we'll do that, then we'll be pleasing unto the Lord as the body of Christ. Amen. Doesn't matter how many. I'm thankful for those that show up. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. But none of that, God's, I don't think God is looking at that at all to determine whether or not his ministers and ministry is successful. Understand, we're really, I don't even like to use that word. It does pop out at times, but God really hasn't called us to be successful. Now, that's, that's the way of the world. The world pushes success. The world pushes you to be in the top ten uh, list. The world pushes you to sell the most. The, the world pushes you to be the, the top seller. Amen. That's the world's mentality. God doesn't require. He hasn't called us to be successful. He's called us to be faithful. Amen. And if we're faithful, then God, amen, then he identifies us with being the ministry that he has called and is equipped. If none go with me, I'm going on with him. I said, if none go with me, I'm going on with him. Praise God. Amen. And just, and just think about that for just a moment as it comes to my mind. Paul said, I'm a, I'm a pattern. And I'm, I'm reminded of what Paul said. Now, you see, it's either the first or second Timothy. He said, well, all of those left me all over in, in, in Asia. Amen. And what happens to a lot of people, amen, they see people leaving and they think, well, that's a ministry not worthy to be a part of. They really don't want to identify with something like that. Amen. When you got a when you got a, a flock of people that's leaving, amen. But Paul said, all of those over in Asia left me, amen. Why did they leave? Well, they found the, the message of the cross became an offense. The more, and this is so true, the more that you grow in in the gospel, the more you understand the Calvary, the more you understand what was accomplished there by God through the death of his son, amen, the more that you grow, the more offensive to the flesh this truth becomes, amen. And we either get to the place to where we make a decision to leave that because the cross has become an offense or we're determined to press into it. As Paul said, I press now toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We'll either fall by the wayside, we'll either start our own church, we'll either do our own thing, or we'll travel 500 miles to go to somebody else's church that's preaching something that's not going to challenge the people. Amen. It's not going to convict. It's not going to change either. It's going to leave you right there and the sin and the selfishness that you're in and the very thing that made you leave that place that God planted you in. <sighs> Hallelujah. To them which should hereafter believe on him to everlasting life. Now unto the king eternal, verse 17. Now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. And not only does it mean the only wise God, but it means the only God. He's the only God. He's the only wise God, but there's no other God. There's people that produce other gods. Amen. But God that we serve, the one that gave us his son, even before the foundation of the world, he is the God and he is a the wise God. Praise God. And he said, Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, to us presently, 
But the preacher sang this morning, one day we're going to look upon him. One day we're going to see him. Amen. As he is. We're going to look upon those nail-scarred hands. It should be a constant reminder. Amen. Did you know when you can search this out, and I don't know why I'm saying this, I'm just kind of on the tip of my tongue. You know how it is, minister. Amen. But you know that in the millennial reign of Christ that the sacrifice, the sacrificial system is going to be introduced, reintroduced, and that there will be animals that will be sacrificed, amen, as a memorial, constantly pointing the people back to what Jesus did at Calvary. I tell you, I didn't know that because you just sat there with your mouth zipped, amen. See, forever it's going to always be about the lamb slain. Amen. Forever and ever and ever. Praise God. It will be for as a memorial then. Amen. Now, amen, we're walking in no longer in the type. We haven't gotten to the eternal reign of Christ yet. Amen. Now we're walking not in the shadow. Amen. Ask your philosopher buddies about that and see what they say. Amen. And he said now unto the king eternal, immortal, amen, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. Forever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. He will be showing us by his grace all of the, the, the great things that grace has provided us throughout eternity future. Time without end. Amen. So now I told you I would explain a thing or two a little bit better. Hopefully, amen. Praise God. When I say that I uh, under my breath, I'm saying, God, help me to explain. <laughs> help me, Lord. Help me, God. I need your help. Amen. Let's go back to verse 8. Spend just a, a moment there. Amen. But Paul said, but we know that the law is good. Amen. If, now you've got to circle that word if. If a man use it lawfully. Amen. If a man use it lawfully. Amen. But we know that the law is good. If a man use it lawfully. And I think Paul was referring by, I think I'm right on this, but in Galatians chapter 2, jot this down for yourself, see what you think. Galatians chapter 2 in verse 19, I think it is, that could be 14. Galatians chapter 2 in verse 19, hey, Paul said, listen closely, for I through the law am dead to the law. I through the law am dead to the law. Now look again at verse 8, amen. But we know that the law is good it's through the law, amen. Paul said, I know it's good, amen. But if we, if a man use it lawfully, amen, the, the using the law correctly and lawfully is us understanding that the law was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. That Christ, yes, that Christ fulfilled the law, amen, and, and, and he carried out, paid the penalty on Calvary's cross. He said in Galatians 2, 14, or maybe 19, y'all correct me on that, for 19, Galatians 2, 19, for I through the law am dead to the law. I'm dead to it. I am dead to it. It's still there, but it's for the ungodly. And what does it do? Well, it brings a curse and that curse is death upon all of the unredeemed. There's no escape in that. We're all born under the curse and the penalty of the broken law. And the only way that we can be removed from that is to die to it. It remains in place. Amen, but we're dead to it through our union with Christ on the cross. I am crucified with him. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in this flesh, I live, not by keeping the law, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Praise God. Amen. So, just hang, suckle your wagons right there for just a moment. Amen. It's Galatians chapter 3, verse 24. Wherefore the law, 
was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. See, if you're, if you're attempting to live by the law, there's no way you can be justified by faith. Amen. You have to leave dependence upon the law to find yourself justified by faith. I think this morning I take being justified by faith because no man has ever kept the law except Jesus Christ. He kept it, he kept it fully as our representative man. And now we are baptized into that. Here's how we escape the penalty and the curse of the law. We are baptized into Jesus Romans 6 and 3, don't you know? So many have been baptized into him, baptized into his death. So he is, we are dead. Colossians 3 and 3, am I getting anything right? Colossians 3 and 3, you are, Colossians 3 and 3, you are dead and your life is preserved. Your life is hid in God with Christ Jesus. There's the wisdom of God. There's how we escape the, the, the penalty and, and the curse and the wrath of God is through faith in what Jesus did at Calvary. And then God, the Holy Spirit, he carries out all of that. Praise God. We just need to have faith in that it has been done and that it was done by God. It wasn't anything that we do. It's what he has done at Calvary and will do if we will only believe. Galatians 3 and 24, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. But it goes on to say, But after that faith, after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, speaking of the law. We're primarily dealing with the law of Moses here. However, men all over are making up their own laws. Amen. They just become a law unto themselves. We've all done that. Don't, 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 you know. <laughs> We've all done that. We've said, well, if, if I do this, God will bless me. Amen. Amen. And the thing of it is, we just make a law unto ourselves to try to uh, maneuver God in our direction. What we think that we're doing is right and holy when it's really uh, not in the pattern that was given to the Apostle Paul, you say. We have to be delivered from all laws. We're delivered from all laws. Then we are handed over to the law of faith and the law of the Spirit. Amen. Uh, amen, Lord. Amen. Let me just stay with that. Amen. Remember Paul's cry in Romans chapter 7 and verse 24. Amen. This In Romans chapter 7 is this man who's under a law. He's trying to keep the law by his own ability and willpower. Amen. Well, in that place, here's where he comes to his senses, Romans 7 and 25. And I don't mean to be speaking bad of the apostle Paul, but you know, Romans chapter 7, I've said it, Romans chapter 7 is not the God. Gospel. Romans chapter 7 is where you will end up if you don't uh, uh, keep... <laughs> If you don't believe the gospel, amen, amen. Romans chapter 7, we don't preach. Romans chapter 7 is where you need to go or where you need to go through, amen. Romans chapter 7 is not the gospel. I know that might be said in a way that may be hard for us to fathom, amen, but we preach the liberating truth. We preach being delivered from the law. And Paul right there in in. Romans chapter 7 in verse 24, he knows it's not the place of the gospel too now. He said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He's, crying. He's realized that he can't deliver himself, but there is a way. There's somebody, and he's saying, who, but he already knows who that who is. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? That place was more than a place of failure, but it was a place of death. 
Amen. Listen, when you lead the faith, it makes no difference who it is, how great their name, how popular they are. Amen. A person is not uh, redeemed because of who their last name is. Amen. A p- person is redeemed because of their faith in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and what he did at Calvary. Help me, Jesus. But it's more than a place of failure but a place of death. Now, having said that, are y'all with me thus far? I ain't got too much wrong yet, have I? Let's let's go over to Romans chapter 8 real quick. Let's go there. Remember I mentioned earlier, now we're, we're under the law of faith, which is how God operates. Man, I give you the scripture for that earlier. If you don't, if I if you missed it, just type in in your concordance, law of faith, it'll pop up. Amen. We're under the law of faith, how God works. This this law of faith is also identifying with the law of the Spirit. Let's look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 1 for just a moment. Amen. It said, don't forget, it's right over there on the, on the left where Paul said in verse 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And he began to thank God through Jesus Christ. And then, now, now, Chapter 8 now, here's the the gospel. Here's the good news. Praise God. Amen. Romans 7 was a place of bad news. It's a place you don't want to find yourself. Regrettably, I think probably most everybody will at some point travel through Romans chapter 7. Amen. Most people do. I don't know if you can escape that or not. Amen. That's one of those places, amen, when we come to our senses, amen, the schoolmaster, amen, the law will bring us to Christ. Amen. If, if not, then we're, we're, we're determined to try to live for God by our own means of keeping the law. And I've already said it, no one has ever done that. And if you and if you fail at keeping any 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 part of the law, you are guilty of the whole and are still condemned. If you get it all right, nobody does or has except for one point and you miss that one little bitty thing, amen, then you still are entrapped by the by the penalty of death and the curse of the broken law. It's best to recognize that Let the law be a schoolmaster to bring you to faith in what Jesus did at Calvary. Amen. Look what it says in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There, now Paul is saying, you know, he, he's writing a little bit different, a lot different than he did in verse 24. He said, there is therefore. See, there has to come that day that's identified as now. That, that day called now. That time called now has to show up, has to show up. That time called now has to show up. There is therefore now no condemnation. Death is, uh, our spiritual death has been removed. There's no condemnation. Paul was condemned when he was trying to live for God by his own ability. Amen. Uh, keeping the, the, the law. Amen. He, he thought, well, I'm a great apostle now. A lot of people uh, applied that before he saved. No, no, no. This is a man, how he functioned after he had been saved. Amen. But he's trying to operate in his own willpower and not by faith. So he said, did I say that in a way we can understand it? Amen. So he said in chapter 8, Amen, there is therefore now no condemnation, no guilt, no condemnation to them which are, here we are, Amen, in Christ Jesus. Amen, we are in Christ Jesus by virtue of our faith in the law. Romans 6 and 3, who are in Christ Jesus, but here's our walk. Amen. Who walk not after the flesh. Paul was walking after the flesh in Romans chapter 7, trying to live for God through his own ability and willpower. But now he's saying, don't walk like that. He's saying, don't go to 7. Amen. Don't walk like that. Who walk not after the flesh. The note says that means depending upon one personal strength and ability or great religious efforts in order to overcome sin. 
if we can overcome sin by any type of law, and this is where the church really gets mad, amen, if we can overcome sin, amen, by law, by going through your religious reg regiment, calisthenics, amen, your celebrate recovery, your teen challenge, your Emmaus road walk, amen, none of those things have power to deliver. They will make you feel good about yourselves, but it's just puffing you up. Amen. There's no power there to deliver you, but it will make you feel good about yourself. But when you come to your senses, and we pray to God that you will, then you'll cry out, oh, wretched man that I am. I have believed a lie. I bought off on a, a bunch of mess. I believed a lie. I believed a religious lie. Amen. I believed something that the devil had polished up to make it glimmer and shimmer and make it look good and I was stupid enough to buy off on it and then when you come to your sins I was just outright rebellious to the truth I was a person in unbelief but thanks be to God Jesus Christ has delivered me amen praise God and he said there Again, now therefore there's no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Walking after the Spirit is a grace through faith walk, faith in the cross. That's how we walk after the Spirit. Amen. Those that have been saved by the Spirit must walk in the Spirit to have that victory. Amen. But let me read on. I'm not done. For the law, here we are. Here's the law that we're, that we're living in now. It's not a law that we keep. But it's a law. The, it's a law that God keeps. It's a law that the Holy Spirit keeps with those who walk in faith. Amen. Help me, Lord. This law of the Spirit tells us that God will not operate any other place. You'll only find the operation of God at Calvary. That's the reason we fight the good fight of faith, keep our faith there. There we'll be set free and delivered from Bud Dummer. We'll be delivered from Heineken. We'll be delivered from Coors. We'll be delivered from uh, your pale males and your camels. You'll be delivered from all of that there, but elsewhere you're trying to Deliver yourself from it by your own willpower. Oh, I know this is not right. I know this is not good. I know God doesn't like that. And today, I'm going to take the last sip of my mud dumber. Amen. What well, the thing of it is, you have made up in your mind that you can deliver yourself by saying no to the Coors. Amen. But that won't work. That's what Paul was doing in Romans chapter 7. Your only hope, amen, is to cry out to God in belief. I believe in that what Jesus did at Calvary, not only will, but has set me free I'm going to walk in it glory to God that's the gospel it's not what I do it's just one of those laws that we're making to my, ourselves amen amen no to, no to, what is it amen <laughs> no telling how many times I threw them pale males out the window I said, that's the last one. Well, see, I was, I was convincing myself that I could do that on my own when I couldn't. I couldn't do it. God had to do it. And the same, see, that's that sin nature, that's, that's, that driving force in us, this causing flesh in us to think that we can deliver ourselves. Amen. That sin nature has to be dealt with through the cross. We have to be crucified to that, amen, and so that Christ can now rule and reign on the throne of our hearts. Total dependence in him and what he did at Calvary. Now we, can live a, now we can live a life that is pleasing unto him. Is anybody with me? You think I'm getting something right? For the law, here we are in verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Everybody say free. Been made free. Amen, not a little bit. Amen. I, I, well, I'm going to set you a little bit free today and tomorrow a little bit more. Amen. 
I have, Paul said, we have been made free. From the sin nature, the law of sin and death. I've been made free. I've been made free. I've been made free. You can be made free today from sin and death if you will believe correctly. The only determination that you that God requires you to have today, amen, is to be determined not to know anything but this. To be determined not to know anything save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now let's take it another verse or two because I want you to see how Paul dealt with that law that he was trapped in, trapped by in Romans chapter 7. And he said, therefore, what the law could not do, speaking of the law of Moses now, in that it was weak through the flesh. Flesh was trying to satisfy the law, but it had no power. Amen. All the law can do will remind you of your sinful way. But there's it provides no power to deliver you from it. Amen. The power's at the cross. Yes. Yes. See, it just, it just condemns. It just reminds you of, of the uh, exceeding righteousness of God and the exceeding sinfulness of man. See, that's the school, what the schoolmaster does. That's what the law does. It reminds us of the exceeding righteousness of God and the exceeding sinfulness of man. Amen. We can't get to the righteousness of God by keeping the law. All it does is just remind us over and over and over that you're a sinner. Oh, wretched man. There you go. That's right. Amen. The law is good if it's used lawfully. Amen. And that lawful use of the law is not me trying to live by it or do it. It's let it show me that I'm a wretched man and let it show me the who that will set me free. And it's Jesus Christ and Him crucified by faith in what He did at Calvary. You see, praise God. The simple truth, the simple gospel truth, amen. Where was I at? Help me, Lord. Let's look at Romans chapter 8. We're still at Romans chapter 8, verse 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, here's the answer. God sent in His own Son. Now look at that again. For what the law could not do, do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. That means he became our representative man. Does not mean he became a sinner as the word faith people teach. That's the reason that is a damnable doctrine. You can't get saved. That's another Jesus. You can't get saved there. Amen. Turn from Kenneth Copeland. Turn from Joyce Myers. Turn from Paula White. Turn from all of those that preach it and all of those that associate with it and look to that for a platform where they can preach. They become guilty by association. Amen. And he said, for sin. Amen. God sent his only begotten son for sin, for the sin dilemma, that he might become a sin sacrifice to atone for sin, to destroy his power, to save and sanctify its victims. There you are a victim of the curse of the law. After salvation and faith in the cross, you're no longer a victim. You are now victorious in Christ Jesus. But most of the church enjoys remaining a victim for whatever the reason. I don't want to go back to being a victim. I want to walk in this victory and advertise, proclaim, preach, and teach this great gospel and this victory that we have been afforded through faith alone in what Jesus did at Calvary alone. So, and he said there, for sin, 
and condemned sin in the flesh. You see that? Amen. The very thing that was set out to condemn us, amen, Christ condemned it in the flesh, in his flesh. He gave his flesh so that I could be delivered from my flesh. He gave his flesh so that I could be delivered from sin. He gave his life so that I might have abundant life. He shed his blood that I might be cleansed, delivered, and set free and walk in a daily walk of victory today, right now, if we'll only believe it. Look what it says, verse 4. That the righteousness of the law, that the righteousness of the law, see, it's righteous. Everything about it is righteous. It declares the righteousness of God. So verse 4 says, if we come by faith and walk in the Spirit, the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk, there it is, not after the flesh, not after our own strength and ability, but after the Spirit, by faith. We walk by faith, then the righteousness of the law will be fulfilled in us. That which God demands of us is fulfilled in us because he sees our faith registered in the righteous one that died on the cross and became man's substitute. Amen? You see that? The gospel. You're not going to hear this. You're not going to hear this. (laughs) You're not going to hear this. Wow. How can I say that without being self-incriminating? They're not going to teach this at the once saved, always saved hangout. No. So, see, that cripples the, the person. That, that cripples, instead of being enabled, as Paul said earlier, amen, you're crippled because in that place, amen, there's no room, amen, there's no need to grow in your understanding, which we are doing today, amen. You just have this same mentality, and they preach it over and over and over again. I heard Paul Stanley over and over and over and over that the grace of God, amen, is is unconditional. I heard him say with my own ears that you can actually, no longer believe and still be saved. That is a lie. Amen. We're not of those who draw back unto perdition, but we're we're of those who believe unto the saving of the soul. Paul said, I've fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I have kept the faith. So where are people getting this that you cannot believe correctly and still be saved? Where are people getting this that says it's once saved, always saved? Where are people getting this phrase of unconditional eternal security? They're not getting it from the Word of God. They're not getting it out of the Bible. Amen. The enemy, the devil, the one that's after your soul, amen, has caused, had deceived these people to believe a lie and leading, the, the, not only have they been deceived, but they go about deceiving others. Amen. And if you're in this truth, you have to come to a place and recognize that that is just an outright lie. If not, amen, you might, as Paul said, you might well just join up with them you might as well just you know em, em, embrace and promote what they're saying you have to come to a place to where you not only reject that but you're be you're willing to renounce it and declare it to be a lie and not of God our great gospel and God's great gospel and this great salvation that we have been given is conditional upon us continuing in this faith amen and what what in the world will hinder. Well, look around. Something has hindered a lot of people. Amen. There's people that should be here this morning, but they have allowed other things to hinder their walk in the spirit and walk in this faith. They have been hindered. Amen. They have been, they have been, they've moved away. They went someplace else. 
Help me, God. Help me, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So he said, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, verse 5, for they who are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. That means believers trying or people trying to live for the Lord by means of something other than faith in the cross of Christ. But they who are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. They're determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Praise God. Help us, Lord. Amen. Let's let's stay with, along those. I'm out of time. Thank you, Jesus. We as believers live by the law of faith. There it is. It's in Romans chapter 3 and verse 7, verse 27. Which is the law? Which is the law of the spirit? Romans eight and two, which I've just dealt with. Which is walking in the spirit? Galatians chapter five, verse sixteen, and verse twenty-five, which says, "If we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit." Amen. Praise God. Now the thing of it is, one of the things that we deal with, and I'm closing, Sister Debbie, Brother Denny, if y'all want to come on up, please. People said, we hear you preach, we hear you teach these things, but but how to we how where is it that we see that we're not just using this grace as a license to sin and that sin is okay. We hear about righteousness, but what what does that do? How does that relate to our our, our public walk in, a, in, our, in our testimony to the world and in the public and in the church. What is described, first of all, in Romans chapter 6, verse 17 and 18, but God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Amen. And tie First Corinthians two and five to that that your face should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Verse eighteen, being then made free from sin. Remember, we're walking in righteousness that's from God. We have been made free from sin. Being then made free from sin, you become being made free from sin, you become the servants of righteousness. Being made free from sin through the cross, your faith in it, not a Romans chapter 7 walk, but a Romans chapter 8 walk. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Pushing it a little bit deeper right now, and then I'm going to quit. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Because see, the, 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 the church is hung up on a false grace. The church is hung up. They can't get it out of their mind. They can't get it out of their, because they have been lied to all their life. The enemy has turned the grace of God into something else, and people have believed that. And what the enemy has turned grace into, the enemy has turned it into a license to sin, which is a lie. The enemy has taken grace, which is not the grace of God. It's a grace that the church has made up. And they use it just like some blanket that Granny made. And they just throw it over everything. And everything under that blanket is okay because it's the grace of God. So what they do, they falsely embrace or they falsely uh, accept every sin under that blanket. Amen. They call it grace. That's not the grace of God. The grace of God sets us free from sin. Amen. The grace of God sets us free. Titus chapter 2 and verse 11 says, For the grace of God that brings salvation. You see, he's, I like it because the Holy Spirit is identifying this grace with the same grace that saved. 
the grace of God that brings salvation. It's not another grace. There's only one, one grace, one faith, one God, one spirit. There's only one. And he said, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared in all men. That means it's, only av- it's, it's, it's available to all men on the basis and premises of faith in Christ and him crucified. But look at verse 12. Amen. The grace of God that has saved us is going to teach us something. And it's not only going to teach us, but if we believe it and walk in it, it's going to equip us. Notice it says, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust. Look at it now. That deny, that means that it can be done. That, that means that it can be done. It can be done. Amen. Amen. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, ungodliness, worldly lusts, we should live soberly, that's vigilantly, amen, with our eyes open, amen. It's time for the church to wake up out of the sleep and slumber of deception open your eyes up and to see and understand the course that you're traveling on is not the narrow way that God has provided through his son. Amen. He's given us redemption through the blood. He's given us a a ministry of redemption which is the same blood in the same way that saved us. Amen. Teaching us, equipping us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. So not only is righteousness an imputed position, but it's a lifestyle. It's a public display. Remember Paul said, amen, I am your pattern. Amen. I am your pattern. You want to know what's godly and righteous? What's pleasing in the Lord? Look to the Apostle Paul, his words, his message, and his life. That we should live soberly, wisely, righteously, and godly in this present evil world, I might add. Amen. Praise God. Now, the twist to all of that, I'm sorry, the twist to all of that, is that the church makes up, they make up their own, uh, they, they determine among themselves what's godly and what's not. You notice that? Yeah. Amen. They, they, make it, they, they determine what's godly. And I know, I know they do because I hear it all the time. As I hear them tell me, well, you know, a little Bible says... The Bible says a little wine is good for the stomach. Well, see, that's a lie. So they make among themselves, the church does this. They, they devise among themselves what is godly and what's ungodly. So they make sipping wine, drinking Bud Dummer, drinking, he- drinking Heineken, drinking Coors. They turn that into, it's all right. It's a little bit, it's all right. That's what, that's what the Bible says. Right? A little bit sorry. I got people listening this morning that don't like that. Well, the reason they don't like it is because they're not embracing the truth. They're embracing a lie. And then right behind that, and I like to use that because when I use that, man, I know I'm ruffling a lot of feathers in the church. But if you turn around, those feathers are laid down. If you repent of going that away and embracing that lie, It won't ruffle your feathers. And then those same people, amen, what did they come right behind that with? They say, well, you're not supposed to judge. Who made you judge? You're not supposed to judge. So the simple, the simple, when I hear people say, well, a little wine's good for your stomach, and then right behind that, you're not supposed to judge, preacher. 
And that tells me they don't really have any idea what the Bible teaches. If they did, they would they would refrain from saying that. That's where church is at. Hallelujah. That's where church is at. That's right. I have to quit. I have to quit. I'm going to open up the altar and let you come down. Praise God. Spend some time before the Lord. If you need to repent, amen. It's a gift. Amen. And ask the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm going to lay it before you and I ask you to forgive me. Lord, help me to keep my faith on the cross, in the cross. Why well, won't have to keep going back to the dog's vomit? Won't have to keep running back to the dog's vomit. Oh, hallelujah. Help me, God. Help me to live a life of godliness, righteousness, and holiness before you. Help me by your power, your grace, and your mercy to turn from these things that's not pleasing to you. Help me, God. You're never going to convince, you're never going to convince your family as it pertains to the liberating truth, the power of God and the cross. Never going to convince them if you continue to live in such. You're never going to convince them of the delivering power of the cross if you yourself continue to live in sin. It's not going to happen. And if the devil gets your kids, whether they be two years old or 20 or 30, it doesn't matter. The devil gets them. That devil came right through you to get them. Amen. It's time. It's time to wake up. It's time to wise up. It's time to get on board. It's time to repent. It's time to embrace the cross. It's time. It's time. The time is now. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the point of time. Let's let it be settled within us today. Let's let it be settled with us today. Hallelujah. Paul said, I'm your pattern. Look to me and order your life after me. Follow me as I follow Christ. Let's do that today. Let's do that today. Hallelujah. Time to turn from this evil and wicked world. Get on board the ark. It's going to deliver us from this world one day real soon. This time it's time. Now's the time. Yes. Yes, my Lord. Yes, that's right. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
I think I'll take free at last. Amen. Praise the Lord. Pray for all the kids going back to school. Okay. Let's let, let all our young ones that we have. Yeah. Well, you'll, you'll have to fetch them. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The kids will be returning to school. Amen. We're just going to pray for them this morning. We'll ask the parents to gather around. Lay your hands on the little ones. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We're waiting on a couple. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Jack, Miles, if you would, come on up, sons. Let me pray. Let's pray together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. Dear Heavenly Father, our young ones, Lord, are returning to school, Lord, and we just pray, God, Lord, that you just keep your loving hands upon them to guide and to direct and to watch over and to keep them safe, Lord, in a very wicked world. Lord, we're fearful at times because they're out of our reach and they're out of our sight, Lord. We just simply have to commit them and submit them to you, knowing that they're never out of your reach and that they're never out of your sight. We're asking God, 
Lord, for you to watch over them this morning, Lord. And every day, Lord, in the days ahead, we see, Lord, you know, how wicked the school system has become, Lord God. And we have to unteach a lot of things the parents do and teach them in the ways of the Lord God. And we pray, God, Lord, that you just watch over these, Lord. Keep them safe. Keep them from harm's way. Every device that the enemy, uh, every scheme, every strategy that he may conjure up, Lord, we pray, God, that you would deliver it from, the, that you would deliver them from it, Lord. Help our little ones, Lord, to know the way of God, to know the way of righteousness, to know the way of truth, so that they can turn away from those things and embrace the liberating truth of the cross, Lord God. Keep your hand upon each one. Keep them safe, help them well. God, we know that you have great plans for each and every one in the day ahead, Lord. We do too, Lord, but we know that it's all. It can never be carried out and never be done without your help. Your grace and your mercy working in their lives just like we depend upon your grace and mercy. Let it flow in their lives. Teach them, oh God. Amen. And help us to teach them the way of God. That we Help us to teach our, our little ones the way of God, Lord, so that they know that they can look to you and depend upon you. Help us Lord, help them, God, to, to know that they don't have to fit in with the crowd. They don't have to fit in with the ways of the world. They don't have to be uh, among those that are so-called popular in society, Lord. But help them know that it's far better, Lord, to be shunned and despised, amen, by the world in the world system, but to walk with you, hand in hand with you, Lord, trusting in you, believing in you for your healing and your protection. Let it be done. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus, and everybody said amen and amen. Amen. Hug your little ones real good. Hug each other. Amen. If at all possible, be back with me Tuesday during the lunch hour for the Tuesday trumpet. Amen. God bless you. Love you each and every one.